In this lesson, I want to talk about the lip and groove feature in SolidWorks Plastic Features. Let's open up an existing part, and that would be in your Infinite Skills Working Files folder for Chapter 4, the Plastic Part, Lip and Groove, SolidWorks part. This is a multi-body part, and while we haven't studied multi-body parts at this point, there's only a little bit that you really need to know in order to make this exercise work. First of all, the Solid Bodies folder should show up in your Feature Manager, and if you click the plus next to that, you should see two bodies in here. The bodies may change names as you add or remove features or use the rollback bar because each body is always renamed for the latest feature to touch that body. SolidWorks will turn these bodies on and off for us as we work through the lip and groove feature because the lip will go on one part and the groove will go on the other. We will also learn how to create what's known as a reveal. A reveal is just a gap that goes along the edges adjoining the two parts. This gap is intended for aesthetic purposes and to help minimize the effect of imperfections along the edges of the two parts. You'll see what I mean as we go through if you're not familiar with it already. Let's get started talking about the Lip and Groove feature. Lip and Groove can be found under the Insert menu, under the Fastening feature, Lip and Groove. The Property Manager looks pretty simple to begin with, but as you create selections, SolidWorks offers more and more options. The first selection box is asking you to select the body on which to create the groove. I want to remove material from the bigger part and add material to the smaller part, so I'm going to select the top body as the groove body. The second box wants you to select the body on which to create the lip, and so I'll select the smaller of the two. The third selection box asks us to select something that identifies the direction. And it's fortunate that we've been talking about the axis feature and the direction of pull axis in particular, because this will help us establish the direction of pull that the SolidWorks interface is looking for at this point. Now you can see that the interface in the property manager has expanded significantly and we have much more to do now. The next selection that SolidWorks wants us to make is to select the faces on which to make the groove. And so if we roll the part over, the face that I want to create the groove on is this face. Notice that the other part is shown only in wireframe here and you can select right through it. Now SolidWorks is asking for the edge on which to create the groove. If you were to sweep the groove, what edge would you select to sweep it along? And so I select the inner edge. In this case, the edge and the face are all continuous. But you may need to use tangent propagation options in some situations. If you were to have a gap in the side for, say, a wire or a button that was coming out the side of the part and interrupted, the edge on which you were to place the gap, you might want to use the jump gaps option. When we change to the lip selection, notice that SolidWorks flips the visibility and now we can see the purple part rather than the gray part. So it wants us to select a face now for the lip and then an edge also for the lip. Now we're getting a preview here, but in some situations, particularly the first time you use this feature, you may not get a preview. The reason for that would be that the default values in the dimensional parameters box may be too small or too large for your particular application. So you want to go through here and make sure that everything is the way you want it. The height of the lip in this case is 80 thousandths, and this gap here is what I've been referring to as the reveal. And so let's key in a special number for that. Let's make that 025 and increase the height of the lip to 0.1. This automatically establishes the depth of the groove for the other part. If you have other values you'd like to establish for the other dimensions, feel free to enter those now. 
Also, if your company has standards for this type of thing, then using favorites is a great way to help you establish standards. Once you get everything set up the way you like it, press the green check. You'll notice that SolidWorks takes some time. First goes through and creates the groove, then it goes through and creates the lip, and it even offsets the edge between the parts to create the reveal that I mentioned earlier. If you look at plastic assemblies, this reveal will become a familiar feature. If we roll down to look at the bottom of the tree, SolidWorks has created two separate features, one for each of the solid bodies, and if these were parts within an assembly, it would create the features in the two separate parts. If you want to change either of these, you go back to edit the feature, it should all be available in the same property manager interface that you use to create it. 